this video we're going to pick up on number 15. Now it's asking us to edit the footer on the first page and we're going to use the ruler to move the center tab stop and the right tab. But you could do this using a ruler or I'm going to show you another way where you can edit your um, using the tab command button. Now this footer what the footer is, is whatever you <clears throat> put in the footer, that means it's going to appear at the bottom of the page and it will appear on every single page within your document. If it was a header, then it would appear at the top. When you click on the insert tab, you look over here at the header and footer group. You'll notice if you click on this drop down list, there is a command which will only, uh, allow you to edit the footer. Now, once you're inside this footer, You'll notice up here on the ruler, there's these little tick marks. This tick mark, when it looks like this, this is your center tab. And when it looks like this, L in the opposite way, that's your right tab. Now you can click and drag. This is a 3.5. You can use a click and drag approach. Or if you like, you can go back either to the layout tab. You'll see the paragraph group or the home, this paragraph group, you can launch that dialog box. And if you click on tabs, then you'll see these are the two tabs that were created. So they want us to change the center one. So if I click on a 3.25, you can see this is the center alignment. And I'm just going to go ahead and change that to, oops, I didn't mean to close it, the 3.5. So let me go ahead and click on that one. And then I'm just going to Go ahead and backspace my two out, and then I'm going to set it. So you can three the 3.5. So, and then this one here, I would have to clear it out. Now they may seem more confusing to you. Um, it's it's up to you. So this one again, I would just change it to seven. It's right. I'm going to set it, but I'm going to make sure this 6.5 is cleared out. Now I'm going to cancel that. Because again, what you could have did is if you want to make sure your ruler's on, if you go to view and you check this right here where it's ruler, <clears throat> you turn that on and you could easily just use a click and drag approach like that. And then this one wanted it over here at the seven inch mark. So once we make those changes, now it wants us to input some information into our footer. Now I'm going to go back down here to the header and footer and I want to click on this because I want to see this ribbon of commands. Now it wants us to insert some document info and when we look at our set of instructions it wants us to insert the title document property field. So when I open this up um, here's my document title and you can see it automatically inserts. Now it's just asking us to use the hour over to you know deselect that and then now you can just use your tab key and it's centered. Now it wants to insert the company information so if you notice I go over here to this sub menu and here is the company information and again I'm going to arrow over to deselect it. Now I just once I'm done that you just want to tap again now you're positioned over at the right and this time they want us to insert the date but if you notice the date's not included in this list but if you click on the last command which is field it opens up a field dialog box and you can go down alphabetically and you want to look for the word date. Once you have date up, it's going to tell you the particular format that it wants you to use. So if you look, it's asking for <clears throat> this style right here. So if we go back, we can see, hmm, all right, the one that's spelled out, which is this style right here. And then you select OK. And if you notice, it replicates the exact date of when you're editing this file. Now, the last two set of instructions, we're going to change the font size to nine point and add a bottom border to the text in the footer. So we're going to go ahead. I'm just going to highlight this, go to home. I'm going to select nine and then I'm going to go to the drop down list and I'm going to select a bottom border. Now to close it, you can double click outside of the footer or you, or you can go back to the header and footer ribbon and then if you click on close, you notice that will disappear. That is an additional ribbon that will open up once you have your header and footer open. But once you close it, it'll disappear and you're no longer in that working space down here. 
Next, we're not going to use any shortcut buttons for the border. Now it wants us to use this uh, borders and shading dialog box so we can insert a page border. And a page border would be around the entire page of the document. So let's work on that. So if you go to your home tab and your drop down list and you go to the very last command, there is a tab right here which is listed as page border. Now when you open this up, it's asking us to apply this shadow effect, this solid line, no dashes or anything. They want us to change it to this color. If you pause for a minute, your screen tip will appear and then change the size to one point. And if you select OK, you now see the page border has been appeared and it's a little bit thicker on the right side and the bottom because it's the shadow effect. Now, number 17, they want us to center the entire document vertically. That's useful when you don't have a lot of text to fill up your entire page. Sometimes you want to center it vertically, uh, not horizontally, but vertically, which is up and down. That's useful so that way you have even white space at the top and bottom of your document. So for us to do that, we just want to make sure that it doesn't matter if you're on the Home tab, the Launches Paragraph dialog box, or if you're on the Layout tab, um, the Layout tab, doesn't matter. Same dialog box. You launch it. Once this is launched, my apologies, it's not the paragraph dialog box. You want to be on the layout tab. It's the page setup. Once you click on the page setup dialog box, you want to go to the layout tab. And if you go down here, you'll see there's the vertical alignment and you want to select center and you select OK. And then your last set of instructions, make sure you're on the view tab and you'll see this page movement group when it wants you to look at its um, slide you know, side to side, excuse me, and then it wants you to click back on the vertical before you save it as your last uh, step in your set of instructions and you want to upload it for grading. Just a heads up, I went to self-grade mine and I found some errors and I noticed that for my title, for some reason I applied the heading two style. So I applied the heading one style and when I did that, I had to reapply the all caps, the 18 point, and all this stuff. So just know if you have to change any of your heading styles, you need to go back and perform all these additional steps per your set of instructions because it will wipe it out. Also, remember as you're toggling back and forth and you're going through your error report, it's very important to expand it and you're going to look directly for this word feedback. Feedback is going to tell you what you did not do correctly. So this is all within a step seven. Now, when you're going and toggling back and forth, you're making the change, you're going back. <clears throat> if you need to go back at any point to read your set of instructions to make corrections, just know to get back to this error report, click on previous attempts and know this attempt, this part right here is your error report. And lastly, remember to click on save before you upload it for another attempt. Best of luck with your project.